Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, some of you might know or remember that I made a Raspberry Pi 5 storage guide uh, on this little thing right here. Well, this is still running. It's uh, down for now, but that's because I want to upgrade it already. I found a really cool device that will le let me attach even more uh, hard disks and that way I can expand my node already because this little thing is a beast. So I'll show you what I bought and where you can get it and I'll show you exactly the upgrade path that I'm going to go with connecting more drives to the Raspberry Pi. This is quite the build video, so if you're into this kind of thing, stay tuned. Alright, so what exactly did I buy? Well, I bought a hat for the Raspberry Pi and it's quite a special one because look at this. This is a 5 SATA hat that uses PCIe, uh, the PCIe lane on the um, Raspberry Pi. Now it is made that you can connect it to power, but I'll be using this power supply right here to power the drives. So I'm going to be connecting five uh, 12 terabyte disks through the uh, SATA ports. And then I'm going to connect one of the 12 terabyte disks through the USB 3 and the OS drive through the other USB 3. That way I'll be able to have six hard drives all running stoic just on this little Raspberry Pi right here. Um, this is going to be quite the build. So please keep watching if you really enjoy this. Um, I have this hard drive cage right here. It's an upgrade cage from Corsair. They're quite cheap. Um, this will be able to house all the drives. And then I have some USB uh, 3.0 to SATA converters. So this will go into the hard drive and it requires external power as you can see right here. But this power is just 12 volts. So what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken a SATA connector and I have soldered uh, the um, power uh, connectors on right here. That means I can power the uh, adapters, these two, from the uh, power supply right there. So all in all, this is gonna be a build where the only two wires that is connected to mains is the uh, Raspberry Pi USB-C and then the power supply for powering all of the hard drives. Um, I went ahead and bought a high amperage uh, USB-C connector for the Raspberry Pi as well. Um, I also got this fancy little switch right here that will keep the uh, power supply running at all times. It was really cheap and easy to use, so that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it now. Um, the drives that we are gonna be looking at is the 12 terabyte Seagate Exos Enterprise drives, these ones right here. I do have another five of these ready to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and assemble the tower and get the drives sitting in there. All right, so I went right ahead and got all of the uh, 12 terabyte disks. We got five right here and we got run right here. This is also gonna come out of this uh, enclosure case. This is not a case, but this strap thing. Um, this will give us six times 12 terabytes. So 72 terabytes. That's quite a lot of storage for a Raspberry Pi 5. I think that's a great project and I think we should put it together. All right, so all six hard drives now have their little cage on and I'm gonna be putting it into the uh, mount here. It has some screws that has been screwed in. Um, this will help keep the uh, mounting uh, itself uh, together. Um, what I'll go ahead and do is put them in and then I will put the little uh, heat sink on the uh, SATA controller right here. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick the little heat sink on the chip that is right here. I believe that is the correct placement. Uh, what I'm then gonna do is go ahead and put in the standoffs and mount it on the Raspberry Pi. Now, one thing that I noticed is that they did include two uh, PCIe ribbons, which is really nice of them if you, in case you break one. But that basically just goes into the PCIe uh, slot right here and then into the little connector that is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and see you in a bit. All right, so I did go ahead and screw in the standoffs and mount the SATA hat. As you can see, it does connect into the GPIO pins right here. And then it has the uh, PCIe Express ribbon uh, right here. Um, one thing that's cool is that you can still have your fan uh, underneath, right on the uh, CPU of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I was saying earlier that it does support a power input of 12 volts. And then you have actually a power connector right here with SATA that you can connect to it. But it did say on the website that it was a little bit... Um, uh, you couldn't use it with all five uh, of 3.5 inch hard disk because of the power draw. So I'm just going to ditch this entirely and power it off purely of my uh, ATX power supply. All right, so as you can see, all the hard drives are in the hard drive cage right here. I did go ahead and add this huge fan that I have. It's a Cooler Master fan. Um, and I think it fits quite perfectly with the size. Uh, I zip tied it on um, just to make sure that it's uh, sitting quite perfectly. I'm of course going to cut the zip ties right here, 
but it does blow air right through the hard disks and I can actually feel air coming out from the other side right here. So this is gonna help cooling the uh, hard drives immensely. It's gonna, I think it's gonna do a great job. Um, it is just a Molex to uh, a PVM, or it's not PVM, but it uses the PVM connector, kind of fan connector thing. So that's gonna work perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, now cooling is done. Let's move on. All right, so it's definitely coming together. Now I did go ahead and add a piece of cardboard underneath the Raspberry Pi here, just to prevent any shorts because this is metal right here. I also added a zip tie right above the hat, uh, just to make sure that the Raspberry Pi sits snug. And then I went ahead and routed the USB cable for the top hard drive and put it into the USB 3.0. As you can see, it sits just right here. This is perfect. And all the SATA cables are plugged into the uh, hard disks, as you can see down there. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is plug all of the uh, SATA connectors into this hat right here, and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so this monstrosity build is nearing complete. We have put up all of the SATA cables, all of the power connectors. I did go ahead and put in a SATA splitter just to power the um, the uh, 12 volt to the USB hub for these two. I went ahead and plugged them in. So we got OS drive, we got six hard drives wired up. I did put a fan on top of the hat. I don't know how hot it gets, but I believe with this many connections, it could be trying to push through quite a lot of data. So I did put it on there. Uh, we do have access to the um, HDMI and the USB. And I did go ahead and wire up the um, power button and uh, zip tie it in place. That way I can just switch it on. Now I have not switched on the system yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and power everything. Um, the Raspberry Pi and the uh, power supply is gonna get some juice. And we're gonna fire it up together and see if anything pops up on the screen and if everything is working as it should. So stay tuned for that. All right, so I've put in the HDMI cable, the USB-C for the Pi. I've put in the keyboard and mouse, and I've put this on the on position. I've put power on both of these. And when I press here, everything should turn on simultaneously. So we'll have a look and see if anything pops on the, on the screen. I have not tested this myself. So oh, this is the moment. Let's give it a try. Okay, we got fans. And... We got some spinning hard drives. You might be able to hear. We have light in the hat, okay. And we have a video output, please boot. Okay, we are in emergency mode. I have no idea why. I'm gonna go ahead and just look into it and I'll see you in a bit. All right, so I went ahead and after the Pi wouldn't boot, I went ahead and did some Googling and apparently because I changed USB controller, one of the mounted drives in FSTAP was causing trouble. So what I did was I loaded up the boot drive in an Ubuntu um, on a PC and then I went into FSTAP and uncommented a line of the story node that was causing the Raspberry Pi to not boot. And just like that, the Pi has now booted and I'll show you. And just like that, the Pi has now booted, as you can see, we are inside of the desktop here. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is connect it to uh, Wi-Fi. That way we can uh, remote into it and see if all the drives have popped up. All right, so I thought to myself that before I go ahead and connect it to Wi-Fi and plug in the uh, HDMI dummy, I wanted to check if all the drives were de de uh, detected. And as you can see right here, they are all here, all drives, including the boot drive, of course, because we booted from it. Um, and the original drive is on the SDF um, path, which makes sense because that was probably part of the reason why I couldn't boot because I thought it was on the SDB originally, I believe. So I think I can go ahead and boot the Pi down, get it uh, hooked up to the internet and I can remote into it in a bit. All right, so as you might see here, I have uh, remoted into the um, Raspberry Pi with VNC viewer. Um, what you see here is all of the drives and I can see their smart data. And I'm currently uh, making sure that they are all uh, partitioned and mounted, uh, as you can see. And then I'm going to go ahead and install Stoy on each drive. And I will see you right after that. All right, so all the drives have now been mounted, as you can see right here. Um, you can see that SDF1 is the one that Stoy has been running on for some time since I made the first video. And all the others are now ready to take some space. So this is all great. And I'm ready to install the nodes. 
All right, so after having connected everything, getting the Pi up and running, I could confirm that all the drives were detected by the uh, SATA hat. Um, I am able to access them. I'm able to read and write from them. The SATA hat so far has been looking great, running great. Um, if anyone is interested, I can leave a link in the description, but just comment if you want a link for it. It's quite expensive. I believe it's $100, um, but definitely a cool way to get a lot of drives on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I will recommend though, if you're gonna power five drives, get like a uh, ATX power supply like I did. Um, but yeah, the product is really good. All right, so as you might be able to see here, um, the original storage node is running it as it always has been, it's back up. We can see that we have definitely been getting some data on this disk, but we can also check the other nodes that I've just installed and they are also running right now, as you can see right here. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you that they're all uh, doing stuff, uh, getting data. Um, keep in mind that these nodes are on the same dashboard. This means that they are sharing data currently, but I believe that over time, this will actually be fine because it will overall give less strain on the Raspberry Pi, but also with the test data and the new uh, TTL uh, algorithm data thing, a lot of data will throw through. So I think that it's not so bad. I think that they'll get plenty of data, but we'll have to see. I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Um, but yes, we now have six storage nodes running on a Raspberry Pi 5 with allocated uh, just about uh, 64 terabytes in total. Um, so this is all great. Um, I also updated my uh, script, uh, my bandwidth script. Uh, I have a video for that if you guys want to see. It currently just shows two nodes online, but I think I'll just give that a couple hours uh, because I think this one fetches some data from the satellite, so I'll just have to see um, how that goes. It also says space available is only 21, but this should also update. It does register all six nodes, so I believe the script will update. So. Overall, the Geekworm uh, SATA hat has been working pretty great. I think that uh, so far, so good. Um, maybe I will do a speed test on the uh, disks themselves. If that is something you guys want to see, uh, please feel free to uh, let me know down in the comments. I could do a video where I speed test all of the drives at the same time using the, um, the SATA hat. Uh, but if that is all, then thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and bye.